The following program is a production of HEW Entertainment and contains views, opinions, commentaries, and content that may offend some subscribers of this show. Listener's discretion is advised. It's that time once again for HEW Entertainment Radio. And that's all I got to say about that. Hosted by Jonathan Clark. The beat! The man! You gotta beat the man! Whoa! Be sure to join us in the live chat room during the show. Hulkamania is running wild like it's never ran before. Call us on one of our request lines. If you live in the United States, call us at 1-641-985-7800, box number 3729288. If you're from Canada and would like to call us, call us from 1-647-724-4194, box number 3729288. Long distance charges may apply in some areas. I've been the World Heavyweight Champion ten times! Or you can always drop us a line at MySpace, myspace.com backslash H-E-W Entertainment. And you will rest in peace! Emailing us works for you too. Email us H-E-W-Wrestling at Hotmail.com. I am a wrestling god! J-B-L- J-B-L. And now, without any further ado, here is your host of H-E-W Entertainment Radio on the official website of H-E-W Entertainment, Jonathan Law. The champ is here! Comment on our video blogs, join the conversation, and like us. So, so what, what are you, you waiting, waiting for? Log on and listen now. Don't miss out on any of the action. Download our app on the App Store, Google Play, and the official website of HEW Entertainment. Once you've downloaded and installed it, you'll get caught up on news, YouTube videos, and more. Download it now. Time to play the game! Time to play the game! <laughs> It's all about the game, and how you play it It's all about control And if you can take it, it's all about your death And if you can play it, it's all about pain And who's gonna make it? I am the game, you don't wanna play me I am control, no way you can shake me I am heavy death, no way you can pay me I am the pain, and I know you can't take me Look over your shoulder, ready to run Like a Cleveland bitch from a smoking gun I am the game, and I may do So move on out, you can die like a fool Try to figure out what my mood's gonna be Come on over, son, or why don't you ask me? Don't you forget there's a price you can pay Cause I am the game and I want to play I am control. There's no way you can shake me. I am your daddy. 
I know we have the fans of Triple H who listen to this show, but if I can get away with saying what I'm about to say, I think that Triple H being on TV is really ridiculous, and I think that taking him off TV was one of the best decisions that could have been made within this new era, because I don't think he fits uh, within this new era, which is why I'm really proud now we have co-general managers of WWE. We have 50% of control of the company still being with the authority, and the other 50% of control of the company, thanks to Vince McMahon and his decision recently in the fallout of WrestleMania, now it belongs to Shane McMahon with his recent return to the throne. With Shane's recent return to the throne, I also believe that we haven't seen the last of Shane wrestling, and his next opponent could be Triple H by SummerSlam or Survivor Series. The power of the company will be on the line in either a one-on-one match between Shane and Triple H or Team Shane McMahon will face Team Authority at Survivor Series for full and total control of WWE as we get closer to WrestleMania 33 next year in 2017. The things that I think are really cool about this storyline between Shane and Stephanie, one of the biggest things that I think is really cool and really outstanding about this storyline is nobody knows where this one is going to go. Yeah, it may feel like history is reiterating itself with Shane and Stephanie being in control of the company and having co-general manager roles uh, with WWE and programs like Monday Night Raw from 2007 through 2010, but at least it's different because now we're seeing Shane and Stephanie not just work with wrestlers like The Rock, Triple H, Mankind, and The Undertaker, and countless others that I could name off for you. We're we're seeing them work with wrestlers they've never had the chance to work with before. Yeah, they've had a glimpse of them backstage, but we've never seen them work with them on TV in front of a camera before. Names like Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, the VOD villains, the Lucha Dragons, and I think it's really a great way uh, to change things up in WWE and make the product that much more unpredictable for the newer generation of wrestling fans. I would also appreciate it too if they mix it up with the legends, you know, feuding with the new talent Mr. wrestlers like Chris Jericho and many others like Shawn Michaels and Bret Hart. I would really appreciate that that too because it would also reintroduce uh, newer wrestling fans to the generation that I grew up with and many of us listening to this show grew up with because I think that one of the biggest things that needs to happen are the new talent that the wrestlers need to have as much of an equal opportunity to work with the Bret Hart's and the Ric Flair's of the past generations because they are what made everything possible for all these wrestlers to do what they did. So I think that Triple H being gone off TV is probably one of the best things that could have been done in the fallout of this year's WrestleMania. His match with Roman Reigns was a good match, and a lot of people believe that himself and Roman Reigns are not finished, especially with how Roman Reigns now is building his entire career and his run with WWE as champion around the whole idea of the Roman Empire being built up around the authority and being built up around him and just this push uh, that Reigns is receiving. Let me say this. I would not be surprised if in the next four to five months we do see Triple H versus Roman Reigns, and probably Triple H is the one who takes the title away from Roman Reigns. That is the obvious prediction. But another prediction that could be made is some new Tom Vignister wrestler in the way of an AJ Styles could be the guy who beats Roman Reigns and knocks him off the wall of the Roman Empire and is the leader 
of the Roman Empire. It's not going anywhere anytime soon, but within the next probably three to four months, which is a quarter of the year, 25% of the year, by the time we get to that point, we could be seeing a new champion crowned out of fit with this new generation and this new era we've kind of come into. There are a lot of things uh, to be expected in the fall of this year's WrestleMania, and by SummerSlam, I think things are going to change and change for the better one more time, and it's going to be because of what happens between Shane and Stephanie. And a lot of people think that there's going to be a pivotal point uh, that we're going to get to in this storyline. We're going to see something fuck up between Shane and Stephanie as they compete for power and their father's admiration. I know that Sh Stephanie's kind of been trying to warm up uh, to Shane McMahon in recent weeks by giving back the picture of himself and his father, saying that I always knew that you treasured this picture of you and Dad. Uh, so obviously it is hyping up for something to happen for Shane McMahon and something far greater uh, than what's happening now. Because let's be honest, I mean, nobody wants to see... Uh, Shane McMahon in control of Monday Night Raw, no matter how much the fans are making people believe or making creative believe, they want to see Shane McMahon in control of Raw. I think ultimately what wrestling fans want to see, because Shane is a pay-per-view legend uh, in matches with Kurt Angle that lasted over 29 minutes, jumping off the Titan Tron in a match with the Big Show, wrestling names like Shawn Michaels, because he's a pay-per-view legend since the late 90s. I think what they want to see more out of Shane McMahon are more of these incredible matches like we saw with The Undertaker, the likes of Andrew Martin, the likes of The Big Show, Kane. That's what we want to see out of Shane McMahon, not this role as general manager. So it wouldn't surprise me none if Shane McMahon, say, lost control of Monday Night Raw and WWE and it was went back to the authority or somebody else uh, along those lines in the way of a Kurt Angle or a Goldberg or somebody who could make this dramatic return between now and the beginning of 2017 and then Shane McMahon just rustles on and off again under a Legends contract like a Rock or someone like an Undertaker. It wouldn't surprise me none because he is a pay-per-view legend. Anyone who can say they lost 